Hey well, everybody, welcome back to Electrical Code Academy. My name is Paul Abernathy. I'm your instructor for today, and thanks for joining me. Um, today we're gonna continue our, our knowledge in understanding services and service conductors and wiring and clearances. And on today's episode, we're gonna kind of cover three topics. So this is gonna maybe be not too awful long, but we're gonna make sure that we cover uh, three important topics today about clearances for service conductors and things like that, and maybe get rid of some of the myths that people may have. But hey, before I do that, I want to remind you that if you really want to learn the National Electrical Code and not just dabble in it, not just go to the social medias and post something you think is code, but you really want to kick your game to the next level. You want to not be just a good electrician who knows how to bend conduit and, and pull wire, but you want to become a great electrician. And all great electricians understand and have a a, a drive to learn the National Electrical Code. If you want to do that, we've got the program for you. There is no program out there better than ours. If you want to pass an exam, you just want to be better at your trade, you want to be a leader, then you want to get in our Fast Tracks program with all of the competency reviews that I personally grade every single one of them and give you feedback. And if you want that and you want to join us on Wednesday nights and really get engaged in learning code and, and how to dissect questions and ask any codes, I'm basically there to be a consultant for you. If you have any questions, then do me a favor. Go right here. Go to FastTrackSystem.com. Choose a course. Watch our demo. Uh, the demos are on every page of the programs, generally all of them. Um, if you're doing exam prep, then it's Fast Tracks Black. Uh, or the Fast Tracks Plus. The Plus basically gives you 12 months access to our exclusive video platform, which is Fast Tracks Tube. So it's included in there. That's what the Plus is all about. But you can watch a demo on that, or maybe you're licensed already and you want to really deep dive into residential, commercial, or even industrial wiring. We have courses on that that really deep dive. Maybe your drive is to learn more about grounding and bonding. Well, we have an excellent course on grounding and bonding. And most people know I serve on Code Panel 5. Uh, and so we deal with Article 250 as well as Article 200. And so that's where we spend most of our time uh, when we're doing code panel review is really digging into things about grounding and bonding. So if that's something that you're weak in, then you most certainly want to check that out. So just go to our website and just take a few minutes, look around, see what you like. If you got any questions, there's a comment button up there. You click it, send me a comment. I'm more than happy to help you out and give you some direction. Uh, but we're here to make sure that you learn the National Electrical Code. That's what Coffee Hour is all about. So Hopefully, you, you get something out of every one of these little videos that we put out. And you do think about going over and joining the Fast Track system. Become part of the Fast Tracks family. We also have a chat feature. We have a message board. We have so many ways to support you. It's not about just books. It's not about DVDs. It's not about watching a random YouTube video. We love code, and we make it interesting. So I want you to join our family. So if you get an opportunity to check it out, please do. Okay, enough of that commercial. Let's kind of get into the course. We're going to talk today about service wiring clearances first. Then we're going to talk about clearances in general, like clearance to balconies, clearances of windows, when you have service conductors. And we're going to answer some of those myths that people may have on the subject as well. So let's go on and get into it. All right, so we're going to start this journey. Obviously, we are in our Fast Tracks program. Again, if you're interested in it, you can go to FastTracksystem.com and watch our demo, learn about all the features you have, the built-in flashcards, all the good stuff. Uh, but this happens to be out of Unit 10, and we're talking about service wiring clearances. Okay, So let's kind of look at it a little bit and see if we can't uh, raise the education level of everybody that may be watching this. All right. 10-3A, conductors clearance over flat roofs. So majority of the commercial buildings have a flat roof and you may have service conductors that come from the service drop uh, down to a weather head with a mast. And you have to make sure that if it's an accessible roof and it's flat, um, that you have to make sure that I have a certain amount of clearance above it, okay? So let's kind of go look at it. So we have these great illustrations. And by the way, our entire program is, is made up of all these different illustrations and call outs uh, to kind of get you into the topic, summarizes it for you, but also gives you code references. And if you haven't heard me talk about it before, anytime you see a code reference that's between these little chevrons, you want to stop what you're doing. And you want to go to the code book and read it, even though we might paraphrase something. You really need to go, and that's kind of the secret to our program. It's to work you in and out of the code book, not just to give you something you read, 
and you don't know when to leave the material and go to the code book. You needed some guidance, you need some guidelines. And so that's why we have the chevrons. So what you do is you read it and then you stop and you go to the code book and you read the code section. Then you come back and it just makes things so much clearer and easier to understand. Plus, what else is it doing? It's teaching you to maneuver throughout the NEC. And that's what we're trying to do is to get you to maneuver through the code, at least raise that comfort level of maneuvering. All right, so here we're looking at A. So A is right here. It says, the service mass shall be strong enough to safely withstand the strain imposed by the service drop or overhead service conductors. Supplemental braces or guy wires may be necessary. Okay, so in this case, uh, clearance above the roof, uh, they were needing to maintain the clearance, and so they raised up the actual uh, weather head on a mast, uh, not only to have our clearance, right, but if it's up too high, they had to make sure that they have to put guy wires in, right? So all of that stuff. So we'll go look at that. So you see 230.28A. What you're going to do is pause and go look at it. But don't do it now. Don't do it now because we're going to do it. We're going to go to 230.28A and kind of look at these guy wires real quick. All right. So I'm over here in the code and I'm going to 230.28. So we'll go back a little bit. And we're going to go right here. Okay, so service mass and supports. Okay, so all this information is basically what we regurgitated. But let's talk about the strength. All right, obviously you're not going to extend PVC up, right? Heat of the day, bends, that tension from the service drop, obviously it's not going to happen. Again, so where the mast is actually supporting the drop, if it's utility service drop, or if you're the electrician and you ran the overhead uh, service conductors, right? And we will talk about that. If you don't know the difference between overhead service conductors, service drops, service laterals, underground service conductors, service entrance conductor, if you don't understand all that, go to Article 100. It's pretty self-explanatory, but we obviously are going to have a video coming up on that. As you can see, I promised folks out there we had tons of videos coming. They're coming, and we're going to be breaking all these things down for you. And they're supplemental to our Fast Tracks program. So our Fast Tracks program is the key. But here we want to do some supplemental stuff and kind of, kind of help solidify the learning process. So here we are over in the code. It says, the service mast shall be of adequate strength or be supported by braces and guy wires to withstand safely the strains imposed by the service drop or overhead service conductors. Hubs intended for use with conduit that serve as a service mast shall be identified for use as service entrance equipment. Now, talk about the strain. Now, it says adequate strength. Who determines what's adequate strength? Well, a lot of times the utility companies will tell you what they expect you to use. They'll say whether you're supposed to use rigid or IMC. Obviously, those have adequate strength. Now, whether EMT has adequate strength or not, again, it's going to be subject to the AHJ determining that strength. Um, but in most cases, what we see is rigid or intermediate, okay? Now, did anybody tell me, incidentally, what's, what's wrong about this picture? <clears throat> Let me go back to it real quick. I just, gotta, I, just, I just can't help it because I don't do the illustrations. Even though they're great, I always like to bring things out. Anybody notice something here kind of weird? Yeah, notice that the service conductors run through the building, they're supposed to be on the outside of the building. Okay, you can't have service conductors running into the building. But, but in all fairness to this illustration, maybe this raceway is encased in two inches of concrete all the way down. Okay, just to be fair. Uh, but it's kind of little things that I notice. And again, everybody can be critical of everything. And again, that's just the nature of where we are. But again, we're using this to illustrate a point. Okay, so not really to, not really to nitpick the picture, but it's still a great graphic. Uh, okay. Next, let's go from, let's go, and that was B right here, and that is overhead service conductors shall not be readily accessible, and that is 230.24. Okay, since we're here, we might as well look at it. There are chevrons, and I want to get you used to doing that, get you used to stopping in your code and going. So here's your clearances right here, and you'll see right here it says conductors shall have a vertical clearance of not less than eight feet above the roof surface, okay? Now, there are some allowances for reduction of clearance. We'll cover that in another video, but uh, basically it's eight feet like you see in the illustration that we had. Uh, there are some exceptions like when you have a roof pitch that is 
412 or greater, okay, it's pretty steep, uh, then you can reduce it down to three feet clearance. But again, generally speaking, eight foot clearance, unless any of the exceptions apply, we have to make sure that we have that, okay? All right, so let's kind of get back here. So that's where we went for that. Remember, chevrons, pause, go look it up. I'll take this off real quick. All right, now, let's look at C. What is C pointing out right here? Okay, right here, just what we just did. Conductors must have a minimum clearance of eight feet above the roof surface, All right? Also, where does this apply? Where does this eight feet, is it just above the surface? Does it apply so? That's when we gotta look at D. D, it says the vertical clearance above roof level must be maintained for a distance of at least three feet from all edges of the roof, okay? Now that's covered in 230.24a, okay? We saw that, but we didn't go that far, so let's go on and finish that off. Let's go back, just go back, doesn't matter. Again, we're gonna dissect these things right here. So we stopped at that eight foot, but here is where it said the vertical clearance above the roof shall, shall be maintained for a distance of at least three feet in all directions from the edge of the roof. Okay, so what does that mean for us? Well, this eight feet, by the way, this eight feet comes out three feet. Right here, see my mouse right here? It comes out three feet, then up eight feet. And so you kind of think of this whole roof, it encompasses this whole roof, but it extends out three feet beyond the perimeter of the roof. So it's out three feet and up eight feet. So it's basically like putting a cap on top of it, if you will. So that's where you have to maintain this clearance. And it has to be, starts at the three feet from the roof. And it has to be at that eight feet and maintain that all the way to the point of attachment, okay? So that's kind of the general rule. We're not talking any of the exceptions in this episode. That's kind of the, the general rule for that, all right? Now, people say, well, I would like to get deeper in all that. Well, our courses do get deeper in all that if you're in the Fast Tracks program. But here it says the vertical clearances of overhead service conductors covered in 230.24 pertain to every type of occupancy. Okay, so it's it's not just commercial. Maybe we see a rooftop here, but this also applies to dwellings as well. So again, don't think that we're looking at this and this is only commercial driven because it shows a picture of say a commercial building. No, this is all occupancies that this is this rule is going to apply to, okay? Uh, and then refer to unit nine in this book or this course for detailed illustrations explaining vertical clearances. So in unit nine, remember I told you we're going to have other units. And if you're in the fast track, unit nine will show you uh, sloped roofs, flat roofs, all of those type of clearances are covered in that unit. So it's uh, going to be so easy for you to understand it if you're in the fast track program. And again, this is this is low hanging fruit. I like to call it. For electrical exams. And if you go over this stuff, then it's right here. So if you use the three wave method that, that I created more than 20 years ago, um, if you go with the three wave method and my specific way of doing it, and we have a video available for that, you just go search for it on YouTube or even on Fast Tracks Tube. And if you follow that, as you're going through it, you're going to see these questions that you just know the answer to. And if I take a question that get that the is basically you're allotted two and a half minutes per question, but I can answer it in five seconds because I have that knowledge. Look at all the extra time you're gonna build up for use on the much harder questions. And that's the method to the madness. The Fast Tracks program is trying to teach you things that you can remember, practical things, the more important things that come out of the code. We can't teach you everything in this document. This, this is a thick document, right? The code, let me show you here, folks. Y'all seen this? This, this right here, this is a thick book, right? And the text is really small. So that means it covers a lot of content. There's no way we can cover all of this, but we can teach you the skills, the skills to be able to navigate that book. And along the way, teach you a lot of stuff that you'll remember. And that's our goal. And that's called ballistic training. And that's kind of our approach to these chevrons and going to the code and back and forth and back and forth. All right. So I said we're going to do multiples in this unit. So we definitely are going to now get into clearances from openings. Again, we're talking service conductors. Now, when it comes to the openings, a couple things to remember. We are not talking about EMTs. We're not talking about rigid conduit. We're not talking about intermediate conduit. We're not talking about SE cable that has a sheathing or a jacketing covering. We're talking about the open 
conductors like from a service drop. And once they come out of that bundle, which is a multi-conductor cable, it's plexed at the manufacturer. Once it separates, now you have open service conductors or individual conductors. But in a lot of buildings, you also have still drops that come down that have separate service conductors that come down. Okay, we call those open service conductors. So the key to this clearance from openings has everything to do with multi-conductor cables without covering or jacket or the individual service conductors as they may come out of that assembly, even at the point of attachment where they separate. Those are individual service conductors and we have clearances we have to keep away from. So let's look at that again. Great illustrations. So let's look at A. A is pointing right here to the three feet. So here's our service drop right here. And we see it's connected to the side of the building. It says open service conductors or multi-conductor cables. Uh, this could be a service drop cable. Okay, It has, has no outer covering. It's not. They're just exposed conductors. Uh, it says must have a clearance of at least three feet from windows designed to open. That's important. Doors, porches, balconies, ladders, stairs, fire escapes, and similar locations. Where is that covered? 230.9A, that's a Chevron. Pause your video. Go look it up to get a more healthier understanding of how this rule reads, especially because you're going to be flipping through it as you do an exam or in the, in the real world, in the field, where it's really critical. You want to make sure that you get used to that, that going back and forth. Obviously, we've talked about that quite a bit. But the three feet clearance from windows that are designed to open, this doesn't apply to a window that is fixed, that is not designed to open. It doesn't apply to those. Also, it doesn't apply to the area above a window that's designed to open. It applies to the left of the window, to the right of the window, up to the very top of the window, but not above the window. And it also applies in front of the window. It also applies below. So it's three feet in all directions except for above the window. Okay? And remember, it does not apply to fixed windows that do not open. And that same three-foot clearance applies, again, to doors, balconies, porches, ladders, all that kind of stuff. So let's kind of look at this illustration A right here. Okay, so here's a balcony. Here's a balconies here. Okay, and it says balconies right here. Okay, here's the ladders. But you see it's more than adequate here. It's at least three feet from any of that stuff. Now, if it had been a window right here, then that would be a problem, right? It, there would be an issue. Now, if that window was right here, but it was a fixed window, maybe just a round kind of round viewing window or something that's not designed to open, then that would not be an issue. OK, it's got to be a window that's openable or designed to open. OK, now let's look at B. So B is talking right here. So this is a clearance, public streets, alleys, parks, parking areas subject to truck traffic and non-residential driveways require a minimum vertical clearance of 18 feet. Now that's in 230.24 B4. Okay, so I'm going to highlight this because I want to prove, I want to talk about a point here uh, that's really important for us to understand. <coughs> now I'm going to look at the notes first and then we'll come, we'll come back to look at this because I want to point out something because we are going to go to that. And if you got your code books, you can go on and go to 230.24 B and wait for me to get there. But I'm going to get there. Because I want to talk about this clearance thing without getting too deep in clearances. We're going to obviously cover that in a different video uh, and cover all the different clearances. Uh, but I want to, you know, I want to talk about that one for a second. Uh, but let's look at this note real quick. So the note says where a building exceeds three stories or 50 feet okay, in height, brand circuits and feeder overhead lines must be uh, must be arranged where practical so that a clear area of at least six feet wide will be left adjacent to the building or beginning within eight feet to facilitate the raising of fire uh, firefighter ladders. Okay, that's 225.19a. So this has to do when your building's going a certain height and now you have to clearance for things like um, rescue ladders and if there's a fire or whatnot. So this applies to the height of the building. That's all covered in 225.19e. Pretty straightforward uh, to make sure that you have those clearances. Um, that's a different clearance than what we're talking about from grade, right? That's in clearance specifically here. Uh, that, and it, again, where does it begin? It begins at eight feet. 
right? And again, it goes up to the 50 feet uh, or higher if it exceeds, exceeds three stories or 50 feet. And so the clearance area is six feet wide. Okay, so if you have to make sure that clearance there. All right, but let's talk about this here real quick. So take your code books and let's go to 230.24B4. I'm going to go there. And we're already here, obviously, because we were on clearances. So remember, dot .24 seems to be clearances, right? Uh, but you'll notice that when it talks about clearances here, notice what it says. It says overhead service conductors. It does not say service drops. That's an important distinction, folks, because if you go look at Article 100 and look at the definition of service drops, this is typically controlled by the utility and they dictate the height and clearances. Now, most of the time they're gonna mirror the NEC, but they dictate that. So when you install your point of attachment and your securement to the building, um, while it's not necessarily the NEC's responsibility for these clearances on service drops, um, you have to make sure because obviously you got to meet the utilities requirements too, or they're not going to bring the service to your building. Now you might have an inspector who's arguing about clearances because it's service drops, but that's not what 230.24 is all about. That's about overhead service conductors. So you might be saying to yourself, well, what the heck is an overhead service conductor if it's not a service drop? That's why definitions are so important in Article 100. Now, let me give you a scenario on this building. So let me kind of, before we read any more about this, I kind of prematurely took us there. Um, let's go back real quick to the image so I can explain something. Now, if the transformer was out here and it's a utility transformer, okay, you see my mouse on the screen. If the transformer was out here on a pole, and it dropped from the pole to right here, then this would be under the exclusive control of the utility. So based on 90.2 of the NEC, that is outside of the scope of the NEC. And if it's outside of the scope of the NEC, then 230.24 can apply. However, let's say this property had a transformer that was 50 feet away. And the utility said, we're gonna stop at this transformer yet it's too far for the service drop to go over to the actual building, so they have to put another pole in. Now, if they stop at the transformer, that is now the service point. And the drop from that transformer now to the pole, and then continuation from that pole to the side of this building, might be installed by the electrician. And if that's the case, that is called an overhead service conductors. And that is indeed governed by the National Electrical Code. In fact, that is what we're talking about here in 230.24. So I think it's an important distinction that most people won't argue anyway. They'll say, well, I'm just gonna make sure that I put the point of attachment high enough that I'm gonna meet 230.24, even if it's service drops, because they don't want the headache and the inspector who may or may not know the difference in 90.2 and whether this is covered or not. But also they're charged with something that if it's too low, then it's unsafe. And so they have to protect their what? The constituents of their community, their public servants to the community. Um, so at the end of the day, it becomes a compromise and most people just follow 230.24. But I thought it was important for you to understand the language in the code to differentiate. Now, it's a great time for you to pause and go look at 90.2 and see what's covered and what is not covered in the NEC. But as you expected, we will cover that in other videos can't cover everything in one video. People have told me my videos are too long, so we're trying to break them down, okay? All right, so let's go back to the code real quick. So here we are, and we're gonna be looking at B. So here it is. Notice it also says vertical clearance of what? Overhead service conductors, not service drops. And that's a defined term in Article 100. So now it's assuming this is an overhead service conductor. Then you have the clearances right here. And we chose, in this case, it was 18, inch, uh, 18 feet right here. 18 feet, why? Because this looks like a commercial building uh, and it's a non-residential driveway. So 18 inches for public streets, alleys, roads, parking areas, subject to truck traffic, driveways, and other than residential properties and other lands such as cultivated, grazing, forest, and orchard, okay? So 
It is subject to truck traffic, driveways that are other than residential. So obviously it's not a residential driveway uh, like you'd have at your house or whatnot like that. So in this case, 18 inches of clearance, if those were overhead service conductors is required. And you're just gonna adjust your point of attachment on the side of that building in accordance with that, okay? So, you know, to get your clearance, if these were overhead service conductors, then obviously to get your clearance, you might move this point of attachment in the weather head higher in order to be able to facilitate that. Make sense? Okay. So that's clearances. So I do want to remind you folks that take the time to go look at 230.24 and get used to those different clearances because that is low hanging fruit on an exam, right? And now you know where the clearances are if they're overhead service conductors, okay? Let's kind of go down a little bit and see what we else we have. Okay, we covered the note and we looked at all that. Okay, so again, as I told you, we're gonna cover one more in here. So again, this is gonna be a little longer than normal uh, of a normal norm that I'm starting here. Um, vertical clearance above platforms. All right, so look at what we've got here. So here you gotta stay three feet away, right? We just saw that in the previous requirement. And so we, we had to stay at least three feet away, right? So let's look at this right here. So A, the drip loops. A drip loop's lowest point has a minimum vertical clearance of 10 feet. Okay, that's in 230.24B1. Okay, that's when we said we can go back and look at that just real quick because we do see chevrons. Here you go. Here's that vertical clearance. Again, overhead service conductors. Here's B1 right here. There's the 10 feet. And so this is at electrical service entrance to buildings also at the lowest point of the drip loop of a building's electrical entrance and above areas of sidewalks or, or uh, and above areas or sidewalks accessible only to pedestrians measure from the final grade or other accessible surface other accessible surface okay if you have a rooftop and it's accessible then you still have drip loops. You're still gonna have to maintain that clearance. So that's kind of one of those things you gotta be aware of. The conductors might have to be at least eight feet, but then if it's an accessible rooftop, then you gotta worry about that 10 foot clearance to the drip loop. That might cause those conductors to have to move up higher. See how the code works? So many things get intertwined here, all right? And it says surface only for overhead service conductors supported on or cabled together with a grounded bare messenger where the voltage does not exceed 150 volts to ground. Okay, so that's a 120-240 drop. Any one of the phases to ground is going to be 120. So again, it does not exceed 150 to ground. Okay, so we have to have that 10-foot clearance. Okay, also I will tell you this applies also around your houses to that service, the drip loops. You need to have a minimum of 10-foot clearance. Okay, so again, low-hanging fruit on an exam, folks. 10 foot clearance, okay? All right, let's come back to the illustration here. So that's where we got that 10 foot. So right here, it's three foot out and obviously we have 10 foot clearance and it's measured from this point where they can stand on the platform, right? You notice what it said in the code? It said what? It said lowest point of the drip loop in the building's electrical uh, entrance, I'm reading here, and above areas or sidewalks accessible only to pedestrians, okay? So again, being able to reach those from the platform and make sure that you have to have that clearance, all right? So in this case, minimum of 10 feet. And notice it says final grade or other accessible services, okay? Now, going down a little bit, we're gonna look at, here's the conductors right here. So they kind of drop over, right? All right, so vertical clearances, the final span above or within three feet measured horizontally of platforms. You saw that earlier, platforms, windows, doors, or whatever, okay? It says the vertical clearance and the final span above or within three feet measured horizontally of platforms, projections, or surfaces that will permit personal contact must be maintained in accordance with 230.24B. And we saw that. So this platform... I have to have the clearance above it, right? But I also have to make sure that it, these, these conductors stay three feet away from it, 
right? So all of that, here's a door. It's be three feet away from the door. Here's a window. We'll assume this is an openable window because stay three, week, three feet away from it. Of course, this is over the window, so that's not an issue, okay? So we still have all these clearances that we have to be aware of, okay? And then D, right here, here's the window. It says here, the three-foot clearance required does not apply to the conductor's run above the top of the window. We saw that. Okay, that was in the exception. If the window, it doesn't have to apply to the top of the window. Because the fire escape platform, uh, because it is a platform, people stand on it, is it accessible to pedestrians? The 10-foot vertical clearance takes precedent over the window clearance. Okay, so just because the window doesn't come into play above it, it still needs to be high enough because the platform is accessible to pedestrians. They can get there. So we still have to have the 10 foot clearance above it. Okay, see how all that works together? You have to be very aware of your situation, right? Now, if none of this was here, then these conductors would only have to be what? 10 feet from grade. But because of these platforms and people standing out here on it, it could be accessible. So it has to be 10 feet above. Make sense? All right. Uh, let's see here. That's it. And I think that is probably all. Absolutely. That is all we're going to cover in this episode. As we get into another episode, we're going to get into panel boards and equipment and obviously access to overcurrent devices. All those things we're going to get into. So much to cover. Um, we're just touching the tip of the iceberg. So much of the material is still below the water. And you're going to learn it all in our Fast Tracks program. So if you're interested in getting into a good code based course, the fast track system is the only way to go. It's the only way to go. And you get so much information. You can print out any page you want from the course material, anything you want to print out, charts, guides, whatever. Um, we do calculations. You're going to be so familiar with calculations when you're done here. And again, they still can be challenging, but you're going to you're going to have the basic foundation on how to solve these questions. Uh, and that's going to help you in the real world, not just on an exam. And that's what the program's all about. So if you're interested in it, check it out. If you have any questions, as always, uh, let us know. We have a contact us button right there on our website at FastTrackSystem.com. We hope you get something out of these episodes. A quick, trying to keep them concise, not too long. Uh, this is longer than normal that we're going to be doing, but hopefully you get the information. Thanks again, folks. God bless. Until next time, stay safe. Take care.